If you've never been here, Japan conjures up an image of futuristic urbanscapes, automation, sushi masters, bustling with people who cohabitate in a symbiotic space where both deep cultural respect and a thrust for anything creative thrive off each other. This is one side of Japan, but it's not where I'm going. I'm here to experience rural Japan. A charming landscape of mountains, coastal towns, and farms where life has been the same for centuries. These are the places only grazed by modernity, where there are no expectations to cloud my adventure, and there is only discovery. Hidden in plain sight reside the most welcoming people, eager to share their deep appreciation for nature and willing to aid me in my attempt to discover a truly less traveled, authentic Japan. Tokyo, the first city in the world that had me feeling culture shocked. Each time I see its bright lights, I fall in love all over again. The night comes alive with electric energy flowing through endless skyscrapers and bright lights, shining on a hum in the streets, constantly marched on by thousands of citizens and tourists alike. It dances to its own beat and it's up to you to keep up. For now, I will only quickly pass through as I am off further affront to an unfamiliar rural adventure. Iiyama in the Nagano Prefecture is about as opposite to Tokyo as you can get. Tokyo is a city of millions dominated by buildings. Iiyama, a city of thousands coexisting with nature. It's a countryside renowned for its snowy winter festival, but I'm here in the summer. This canvas is the perfect ground for a rich farming culture. So just under two hours through the beautiful Shinkansen, we find ourselves in Iayama Nagano. It's an extremely stark contrast from Tokyo, and it's a place that's extremely popular for people who love skiing or snowboarding due to its heavy downfall in winter and its proximity to Tokyo. During the warmer summer months such as these, there's lots of different activities to do, and we find ourselves in an information activity center where they have all this information available to you, and I'm so excited to explore this area. Fields stretching out, reaching towards the mountains, the clouds seemingly hung on the sky's ceiling. This is the Higurashi farm where Mami Kyuchi has been farming with her father her entire life. After a brief time as a student in North America, nature was calling her back. The summer crop brings lettuce, tomatoes, asparagus, and corn, and Mami, who luckily for me speaks English, is happy to show me this harvest up close. What's the process to start a farm? Because I'm sure you have to work the soil, you have to make sure that it's fertile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the So what happens here during winter? So no more farming, nothing. No more, no. <laughs> so the season is from um, end of May until mm -hmm. November? Until November. November, more or less. So just very, very small. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after November, what, what, do you, what do you do usually? Yeah, I have a house in the house. I have a house in the house. Also, he's an artist, okay. so he paints. How oh, you paint? A lot. Yes. Okay, great. Oh, <laughs> winter. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, so work some... really hard mm -hmm. and then appreciate the arts and everything. Yes. That works. Red pine, towering giants over the flat farmlands with their forest green foliage, create a serene and unique environment on the Shinetsu Trail in Nagano. This path runs the length of the Sakita mountain range for about 80 kilometers and can take almost a week to hike. Moving over the hard packed earth, the air is crisp and clean. The Japanese summers are warm, but not uncomfortably so, making this trail a pleasure to explore. So during winter here, everything is 
I'm guessing white all over the place. 冬はもう真っ白なんですか。真っ白でこの湖の上を歩けますね。So it's yeah all over the white. Yeah. And we can walk on the, on the lake. On the lake as well.、Mm -hmm. Oh wow. That's great. Like do they do snowshoe and then snowboarding? Like backcountry skiing? Backcountry もやってますよ。You can do backcountry here also. Perfect. Can I see the others? これが千曲川。River. Chikuma River.、Okay. It's the longest river in Japan. Oh wow. Seems like everywhere you look in Japan, there's a mountain. So it makes sense that there are lots of activities catering to this landscape. A group of boarders, perhaps missing the deep snow the region can produce in winter, were motivated to conserve the feel of the slide even on the grassy slopes. In comes mountain boarding, similar to a snowboard, just outfitted with wheels to help navigate the bumpy terrain. I can't wait to see what kind of speed we can get on them. Okay, so can he explain to us exactly how to do it? Hi. Eh, to, このまま靴で乗っていただいて Step in. 滑ります Heel to turn left. Heel side. Heel. Heel. And left. Turn left. Turn left. Okay. Two side. To right. right. To right. And have you tried this before? No. No, my first Snow, time. Have you tried snowboarding before?、Mm, one or two times. Okay, so you、uh, should be okay. No. Okay, let's try it. Let's go. Okay, okay. You first? <laughs> you first? Okay, I'll、go、try、first. it first and then you can go. <laughs> <laughs> I will see. All right. Okay. The cottages of Mori Noye are located deep in the forests of the Nabekura Highlands. These gorgeous wooden cabins are a perfect organic fit to their surroundings, without giving up a homey and comfortable interior, with a warm and welcoming ambience. From here, it's easy to enjoy multiple hiking trails, snowshoeing in the winter, or simply taking the serene view of the surrounding vegetation. We end our night with the essence of what travel should be a continuous discussion with yourself and newly found acquaintances. All sharing experiences that excite and confuse, sometimes over coffee, this time over a barbecue with locally picked produce. So, when did you start cooking? When I was eight years old. Eight?、Wow. Yeah. That's... My parents left me alone. Okay. And I was so hungry. So, I tried making a dish from memory, and then I tasted it, and I was like, whoa, this is so good. In、Your、my head. Time, yeah,、right? my first time. I was like, whoa, this is so good. It's a dish called salpicao,、uh -huh. which is a Filipino beef recipe.、Mm. That's awesome.、Um, I just didn't know how to clean. So, the kitchen was a mess. My mom came home. She's like, what happened? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so、you、after that,、hungry. I realized you know, food is very.、Uh -huh. Sometimes you don't need a recipe,、mm. you just、uh. you remember through taste.、Mm. And so I was like, okay, so it's actually pretty easy to cook. And、wow. just really got into it.、Uh -huh. I always count myself lucky when I spend time with people who dedicate themselves to tending and nurturing nature. It almost makes me feel like maybe one day I'll do the same thing. Nestled in the mountains is Hida Furukawa, not to be confused with other cities named Furukawa. The city is located 20 minutes away from its more famous neighbor Hida Takayama, but this does not mean that it should be overlooked. From the drive in, you will quickly realize how special this place is. Imagine Japanese period style traditional homes, all with their own well kept farms, centered around a set of canals that run through the streets. There's an overwhelming sense of peace that hangs around, welcoming you to linger just a little while longer. To get to Hida Furukawa from Tokyo, take the Hokoriku Shinkansen to Toyama. Change the express train to Furukawa, the whole journey takes about three and a half hours. The sun rises extremely early in Japan, but this being a farming town, the bustle out in the fields starts with it. It's morning in Hida Furukawa and it's time to explore. Our guide hero was so generous with his information about the area and had all the valuable kinds of information and memories. That make trips memorable for me, and that would have been impossible to attain otherwise. Hi, Zai Mat, Warasa! Naka, nani sodate te maskate? Fabrika. 
パプリカ、うん、あわおオッケーイエーイできてますあ本当だこれ今ちっちゃいのオッケーセロベルベル種をね取って自分で巻いた種だからちっちゃいのよまだ She's actually last year she got the seeds from the vegetable and this year she's planting First time it comes、yeah. out Nice And this one これはキュウリキュウカンバー Cucumbers, yes 隠れとったわ。It's the same way to eat it、mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Oh, Philippines is also eating it in the Philippines. It's very sweet. Very sweet. If all the cycling stops were like this in the world, I think people would be happier.、Mm. And this is orange、uh, tomato. Yeah, tomato. Yeah, tomato. What is it? Tomato ore. Tomato ore. They call it tomato ore. So it's like a really sweet tomato. This is very good. It's a good one. Yeah, it's good one. This is spring water, it's very good. And it's not only one place, they have so many places. So, for example,、uh, local people once a week, they're going to like、uh, their favorite spring water place. Or my friends in Takoyama, she's really crazy about the water. So, every once a week, she's、uh, driving to the so many different spots and collecting the water.、Wow. Like,、uh, one place, this place, it's good for like, the cooking the rice. This place is good for the coffee. This place is good for the ice for the drink. So, like,、uh, sometimes really, people really care about the water. They collect it. It makes a massive difference in everything.、Yeah. Doing. Even when, when you cook with it, or when you make、mm -hmm. sake with it, or even、yep. just a drink, you can drink really it, taste、yep. the, the flavor. In Japan, sake is enjoyed at many meals. This traditional rice wine is brewed everywhere in the country, and today at the Watanabe Sake Brewery, I'll find out how it's produced. And though sake is Japanese through and through, the sake brewing master I'll be speaking to hails from Utah in the United States. Cody was happy to share his knowledge on an art I have yet to fully grasp and discover. Is there any particular way to taste sake? Well, more or less, just, it's just like wine because it just has, a, it has an aroma and different taste characteristics as well.、I、sip it like a, like a like wine. wine.、Yeah. Then, this is a type of rice from Akita Prefecture, so up north.、Yeah, it's referred to as a weedy rice. So, it's、um, actually a rice that was used in the Meiji period, so roughly、okay. over 100 years of、uh, history. Has a lot of smoky notes. Yeah. It's almost savory.、Mm -hmm. This is、uh, rice from Fukui Prefecture. Okay. This one's the, I guess you'd say the, the easiest to drink. Is it? But I really like the.、Um, so this one, the smoky,、oh, savory yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah this one's really good. Yeah. Takayama at night looks like something out of an old samurai movie. The sloped, gently curving rooftops, the traditional shoji windows, the prominence of wooden beams in the architecture, and the soft glow of street blind lampposts. Under the stars, Takayama's streets are beautiful, calm, and help me reflect on this incredible day I had. Hida beef is one of the most popular types of wagyu out there. So, obviously, when you're in Hida Takayama, you have to come to different restaurants and just try the different beef dishes that they have. And it's just like a beautiful, luxurious, kind of fatty flavor in your mouth. It just coats your whole mouth and just makes you want to eat more. If you find yourself in a place like this, like tiny shops, lots of character, lots of charm, lots of culture, it just makes you want to kind of take part in it. You know, pull up a seat in the counter, have a couple of sticks, call it a night. Passion is an intangible quality that needs to be worked on. It wasn't easy for Cody to uproot his life in Utah and immerse himself in a completely different situation and culture, nor for a hero to come back from his time spent in Washington State. 
It just shows you that sometimes the only catalyst you need is a firm choice that will set the rest in motion, enabling you to focus on what makes you happy and how you can give back to your environment. There's a deeply rooted pride in loving what you do, and I truly felt that today, and I can only hope that this is something we can all experience. Feeding off this renewed energy, I'm thrilled for what's in store next. Our next stop is the Noto Peninsula, one that protrudes about 100 kilometers into the Sea of Japan, making it secluded from most of the modern sides of Japan. Driving onto the curving coastal roads and surrounded by unique black tiled roof houses, you immediately feel like you're in a different time. Noto is about an hour flight from the Haneda Airport in Tokyo. From there, most of the locations are about another hour away by express bus service, shared taxis, or rent a cars. Shinran no Sato is an old-style Japanese farm stay, and this house is actually lived in by farmers. The feel here is rustic and homey, as if I'm staying in a family house. It's also comfortable and a great way to experience what living in the countryside feels like. Before settling in, I wanted to take a look around, and our gracious host was more than happy to show me some of his local foraging knowledge. Fresh spring water? おいしい。いいじゃん。いや、これが山の楽しみなのよ。それではね、これを取るのこれ。このやつをね。このやつを。ここのこれ家です。それじゃあみんな。そうそう、の、はい、オッケー。<笑> Hi. So now if I'm lost in the Japanese forest, I can survive for a couple of days. Hi. Hi, this is okay. That's Hi. enough. After getting enough flower buds and river vegetables, we headed back home to put our cooking to the test. Ah, to show you what it's like. Show you. So olive oil. Hi. Just throw these in. Now spices, yeah? Hi. Okay, so we'll use togarashi. Hi, okay. A little bit. Okay. Abra. Chisai banana mita. Okay, I'll give it a try. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Hi. Very good. Hi, hi. What do you need to say? Okay. Mm, good, good, good. Mm. It's good. What's wrong with your eyes now? I eyes that you know what do you very know now? Delicious. Very good, delicious. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did a good job. Apparently, did a good job. The night was quiet at first, as we sat next to the central hearth, where most of the traditional cooking used to take place. They were eager to take in my reaction to the mostly vegetarian food in front of me, which looked like it took a while to prepare. A few bites in, and I was hooked. As we all relaxed and shared in stories, I was reminded of the importance that simple conversations hold in ensuring an immersive traveling experience. Sitting right on the edge of the ocean, the Shiroyone Sanmaida, or a thousand rice paddies, are a beautiful bright green contrast with the deep blue of the sea around it. Recognized in Japan and globally as a place of scenic beauty, these rice paddies are still being harvested the way they have been for centuries, by hand. For hundreds of years in Noto, they've been practicing the Agehama style, where salt was harvested by spreading seawater across sand to concentrate its flavor, then boiled before being skimmed and collected. Producing a sweet tasting fleur de sel, this traditional way is still practiced, and the entire method can actually be observed from start to finish at the Wajima Salt Farm. The crashing sounds of the ocean are never far away from here. I wanted to see what kind of local produce was available at the market and try my hand at cooking it. The owner of the house we stayed in was kind enough to walk me through the traditional dishes of the region and showed me the ones she enjoyed the most. Inspired by her generosity, I also wanted to put something for her to try. 
right, so I'm in the kitchen with Mickey and Fukushima-san, and I've never been amazing at fish, so it's really kind of interesting to see how they do it here. And they're doing three preparations with three different kinds of fish. I wish I could tell you the English names, but I absolutely can't. So I'll be doing some grilled conch, French style with some garlic, some butter, some chives, and some spring onions. And then I'm going to be doing uh, kind of like a stir fry mariniere version of my little clams that are going to be delicious with some sake. So just steamed, just to open with some sake. We walked into a hive of activity and I was quickly thrust into the middle of it. This is the Kiriko Festival in Notocho, considered as Japan heritage by the Agency of Cultural Affairs, which has spiritual significance and upholds the traditional aesthetic of Edo era Japan. Floats are carried by teams of men, all competing both for float aesthetics, and who can make it seem the lightest by jumping up and down as if it were nothing and chanting songs along the way. After carrying it around in the hot sun, each team performs a dance number and the voting process starts. By sundown, everyone takes a break for yobare. An amazing tradition where houses open their doors to their guests for food, drinks, and conversation. I was honored to have been invited by the chief of the float I carried and was amazed to find out he does this every year and had once fed over 130 people in one night. I was given the guests of honor seat and was treated with amazing food and friendly company. That was probably one of the most authentic and generous experiences I've ever had in my life. And I feel extremely honored to have been invited tonight. It was just so much fun. People just were sharing their stories and it was just really kind of organic and free. And like he said a while ago, there are no rules. You just have a good time. That's the spirit of it. Once we're all rested up by 10 p.m., accompanied by the sounds of the dying last fireworks, the scene takes an electrifying turn. The floats are all lined up about 500 meters away from a meeting of four roads. Each team is to do one last run and be even louder and more cheerful than during the day. Once at the fork, each team has five minutes to parade its float in the center with as much noise and hubris as possible. After all nine floats have gone, a winner would be crowned. I have never been thrust into such an awkward and out of water situation. That was absolutely amazing. The people were so kind and so great. And that just goes to show how welcoming and happy the Japanese people are. And I just want to do this next year. Easy. I'll be back next year, fast. This has to be one of my most memorable memories in Japan, and I didn't want it to end. I was accepted with wide arms into their fold and shown something only very few foreigners will ever get to take an active part in. And for that, I will be forever grateful.